Join me in Revision Surgery Suite as I walk through a few of my surgical cases. By combining advanced technology with my skills as a fellowship trained corneal specialist, I'm able to improve a patient's vision and quality of life. Helping people achieve their best vision is definitely rewarding and absolutely life-changing. The first case is a cataract surgery. It's a patient, a young man who had a, a really bad corneal injury where an object perforated his cornea. So it left him with a, th a thin and very scarred cornea as well as a traumatic cataract. So although cataracts usually develop over time naturally, he's young and due to his injury, you can induce the formation of a cataract by just having either blunt or penetrating trauma to the eye. So I also knew that the support structures that hold the lens in place are gonna be loose or absent. So a very delicate step if I were to do that manually and open the capsule around the cataract, that can lead to complications if there's no support system. It really leaves your hands tied and increases your complication rates. So I recommended that this patient have laser-assisted cataract surgery because the laser can do a lot of those initial delicate steps without really contacting the eye and thereby making it a lot safer. Viewer discretion is advised. This video shows live footage from an actual surgical procedure. Pictured here is a video of the femtosecond laser portion of a cataract surgery and laser assisted cataract surgery. We bring the eye up and applicate it against a plastic patient interface cone. The left is a live camera view and the right is a, an image of a cross section of the eye so we can see both. Cornea is applinated or applied light pressure, so it's very stable. There's automatic pupil recognition, so the laser treatment is very centered. And it will be doing two things incising the capsule to make a capsular rexus, which is an opening in the thin capsule that lines the lens and then it will divide the lens as well. So the first portion is the capsulotomy, which creates a nice circle opening in the anterior or front portion of the lens so we can access the lens. Then to make surgery even easier, the laser will pre-divide the lens for us, so we then just have to vacuum the fragments out after this portion. And that's what you're seeing now as the laser energy travels up the lens and divides it for us. The laser also can create small incisions to eliminate astigmatism, which just means we can correct more of your prescription. And those incisions are applied to the cornea. Okay, so the first step in this traumatic cataract case was to break some posterior synechiae that had formed from the injury and the inflammation that was subsequent. So I'm using viscoelastic to dilate the pupil and break the scar tissue that is adherent to the lens capsule. So as, after I did that, the pupil expanded nicely. This is making the clear corneal temporal incision with a diamond blade. And this was femtosecond case, so the capsular rexus has already been made by the laser, so I just remove the anterior capsule in that five millimeter capsular rexus. That's a fluid wave from hydrodissection separating the capsule from the lens, so the lens is mobile. And this is the phacoemulsification handpiece to extract and vacuum the cataract out and emulsify it using ultrasound energy. And being a young patient, although the lens was cloudy, it wasn't very dense, so it all came out pretty quickly. What's left is the cortex, and you'll notice because of this patient's trauma, he has floppy iris syndrome, intraoperative floppy iris syndrome, or IFIS. And so it's coming to the wound a little bit, and it requires that I retract the distal iris there so I can visualize the cortex with my off hand as the irrigation aspiration handpiece removes all of the cortex. The corneal scar also it's defocused because it's on a plane closer to the camera but you can see that linear scar. It's much more dramatic under the slit lamp 
but it's highly scarred and very, very thin in that area too. And because of the thinning of the cornea, I knew this, this wound probably would not self-seal. So for added security at the end of the case, uh, added a suture. This is the intraocular lens being inserted. Tucking the haptics under the narrowed pupil requires extra manipulation. Being a young patient too and wanting better depth of focus, he elected for an extended depth of focus lens. And going under the lens to vacuum viscoelastic out from underneath the lens is also really important. This is also a toric lens. Although the patient has, has slightly irregular astigmatism, it was predominantly in one axis. And postoperatively, we were able to correct almost all of his astigmatism as well. This is stromal hydration of the wound, reforming in the anterior chamber. Centering the lens, being extended at the focus lens, we want that central power to be centered on the light reflex. So testing the wound, and as I mentioned earlier, I expected it would probably leak, leak a little bit due to the thin and scarred temporal cornea. So for added safety, I placed a tendo nylon suture to secure the wound and removed it one week later and securing the suture in a 3-1-1 fashion. And then at the end, I always bury the knot for patient comfort. Then measuring three and a half millimeters from the limbus for a pars plana trimoxy injection to better protect from infection with the added benefit and convenience of not needing any drops postoperatively.